on the next edition of No Cover, we'll be joined by a British-born singer-songwriter who now makes his home in New York City. He shared the stage with Bruce Springsteen, Pete Seeger, and he's no stranger to Montclair. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Gail Preslin. Welcome to No Cover, a music program featuring conversation and live performance, where there's never a cover and there's always a good time. Our guest today is James Maddock, British-born singer-songwriter who now makes his home in New York City. Radio legend Vin Skelsa described James's work as heartbreakingly beautiful and exquisitely crafted. Others have said that his music is personal yet universal. His shows are epic and his fans have been noted to be diehard and emphatic. And I should know because I am one of his biggest fans. So he's going to be playing a gig here in Montclair, New Jersey on March 28th. And I am delighted to invite him on the set today of No Cover. So thanks for coming on. Thank you, Gail. It was a great introduction. It's very nice to be here. Thanks. Thanks for being on the show today. So uh, I was looking and uh, reading through some of the press about you and that quote by Vince Gelsa, who used to be a DJ on WNEW in New York and now has his show on uh, WFUV. Uh, that really struck me as a good description of what you do. But I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about what you think your music is about, what your songwriting is about, and how you would describe that. Wow. That's a good one. And also maybe some who are some of your influences have been your musical influences. I don't really know if my songwriting is about anything I can really define. You know, say it's about this and it's about that. I try and tell my story. I try and find a truth in, in whatever subject matter I'm trying to write a song about. I try and write songs uh, that are, I don't know, age appropriate, you might say. You know, I try and write from my heart, whether that's thoughts about my, ch my childhood or, um, you know, my life. And, yeah, the usual, usual singer-songwriter stuff. And your childhood, tell us where you're from. And I'm from the UK. Mm -hmm. I was born in a place called Leicester, which is in the middle of England. And I lived there for till I was like 20. And then I moved to London. And I lived in London for many years. And then I moved to New York City about 11 years ago. And I lived in Austin for a year. So, you know, basically I'm from the UK, I suppose. But I did get my... Um, U.S. citizenship the other day. So. That's right. That was pretty recent. Yeah, like so last congratulations. Month. Thank you. Yeah, right. you're now officially. That's right. I'm going to get. Yeah. Okay. And can you talk a little bit about your songwriting process? How does that work yeah. for you? I, 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 for the most part, I start strumming away on the guitar, looking for melodic ideas that chime with me and make me feel that oh, that's I quite like that. Next can be a very long process. And while I'm mumbling away and singing and strumming and trying to like come up with so something that interests me, uh, so occasionally I will sing a phrase almost subconsciously and then I'll, I'll write that phrase down and maybe I'll use that. And that can be a platform from which to start the song. And then I'll try and flesh that whole idea out. And sometimes that sticks and sometimes it doesn't. You know, and, I, and I'll finish the song melodically and lyrically, but for the, for the large part of it, the, the, the lyrics, I can often move off that lyric. If I, if I lose faith or confidence in that lyric, I will look for another lyric and another, and another um, subject or something that I think is, is better. But it's generally it's melodies, and then uh, the lyrics I'll work on over time, they, t they tend to take a bit longer. Okay, yeah. and I mentioned that you are no stranger to Montclair. Mm -hmm. You are going to play a show at the Outpost March 28th. You have headlined a show there before. You have twice been in the concert for Haiti mm -hmm. that we had pretty recently, and you also participated in a concert. It was a benefit show at the Outpost. It was a tribute to Paul Colby, who died recently. Yeah, that was, was a the... big honor. And that's where I met Garland Jeffries, actually, for the okay. first time. Mm -hmm. No, I, yeah, I love coming out here. It's, it's a real beautiful place to play. And you know, I've, uh, my manager, JW, is from Montclair, and obviously yourself. And it's a great place to play. I love coming out 
so yeah. a lot of music lovers. Yeah, right? for sure. And, and musicians too, local musicians. Certainly. So it's a real treat to have you come oh, out. And okay. I know that you are about to go on a tour with Garland. Yes, right. I'm off Where to the, the I'm off to the UK mm -hmm. on Saturday for like three weeks, and uh, yeah, it's a tour with Garland Jeffries, who is a I mean, he's, he's, he is 70, but in his mind, he's 11. So he's, a, he's an amazing guy. So what, what is it about you and Garland and that, that I think it, really I, well, What's we're, that we're, connection about? We're great friends. I think it's a lot of to do with his, his uh, he has a, he has joie de vivre, you know. He has a, he's a very alive dude and uh, he's a lot of fun and I can still see the, the child in him, you know. I can see him as a kid. He, he's exactly the same now as he as he probably was when he was 15, 16. Well, he's a new, uh, a real New York treasure. He's a New York treasure. He's a That's wonderful, right. wonderful songwriter, and I'm very uh, proud of the association with him. And it's me and him. I will be opening for him, and then uh, he's, and I'll play guitar with him, and then I think there's a percussionist player with, with us. So it'll be kind of a stripped down thing. And we're traveling, we've got like 10 dates all up and down, the UK, so you'll be, you'll be playing in your hometown. Is that right? Yeah, I'm playing mm -hmm. in Leicester. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking forward to that. That'll be a lot of fun, and uh, hopefully, people come out and support me in my Leicester contingent. Won't let me down. Okay. Let Garland down. I'm sure that they yeah. won't. I'm sure that they will be there. They better in full be there. Force. So, okay, we're going to be right back in a few minutes. More conversation with James Maddock, and a little bit later on, he'll play some songs for us right here on No Cover. The very first thing you taught me was to be fair. No cutting in line. Play by the rules. Play by the rules. Don't pick on the little kids. It's important. It's the right thing to do. It helps create the world we want to live in. Well, there's something I need to tell you. Kids aren't the only ones that should be fair. Mommies and daddies should be that way too. Every time you go to the store, you have a chance to be fair. To do the right thing. To make a difference in someone else's life. It's easy. It's not expensive. And it makes a huge difference. Just look for the Fair Trade certified label on products in the grocery store. It means that farmers are getting a fair deal. That their kids get to stay in school. That they can look forward to a brighter future. And we're getting great products that were grown with care. Now that's fair. It's good for our family. It's good for our neighborhood. It's good for the whole world. Buy fair, be fair. Visit BeFair.org to learn more. I'm glad we had this talk. Welcome back to No Cover with our guest, James Maddock. Welcome back to the next segment. Thank you. Thanks so much. So we were talking a little bit about Paul Colby, and I was thinking about Bitter End, which is still an active venue, and some of the other venues which were really the heart and soul of Greenwich Village scene, the bottom line, and prior to that, Folk City. But today things have shifted in the city, and they're a little bit south and a little bit east, and I know you're very involved with the scene in the Lower East Side with venues like Rockwood Music Hall, and that really seems to be the hub and the, real, the music community in New York City these days. So is there something you could say a little bit about what that's like and what that's like for musicians in New York City? I think it's very important for musicians to have a place to go and play and hang out and form a, co a sense of a community. Uh, it's been enormously beneficial to me and I'm sure it's been enormously beneficial to all the other musicians that play at Rockwood. It's a great venue, two or three venues now next to each other and um, you know the stage is great, the, the equipment's great so you, you have a platform to play in front of people that you're going to sound and look good in and uh, it's certainly been a, a, a centre for so many great musicians, you know, incredible people come through there all the time. Uh, great New York musicians hang out there. It's a great place to meet people. I would, it, it's in, interesting, it's, it's the thing that was missing from my life in London. There was never a, a sense of that kind of community for what I did in London. I felt, I mean, I had friends and I had musicians and everything, but it wasn't really a place to go. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really, uh, the great thing that Rockwood has brought to, to the Lower East Side. Um, you know, I wasn't here in the 60s and the 70s, and the, so I don't really know, but I hope it was a similar situation. You know, there was places like the Bitter End and Café Wire and that whole scene. 
I mean, it's not like that now. There's not really a folk revival scene, you know, but there is a lot of musicians and there's a, a lot, lot of, of musicians, right. a lot of great musicians. And some of your bandmates, some of the guys that are often in your band are... Sure, though. Everybody's always in there every night getting drunk. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, that's what we... And that's the place to be if that's what's happening. So you mentioned your time in London. I know you were, you started with the band Wood. You were the front man for Wood, um, that album, Songs from Stanford Hill, wonderful album. And you had subsequently, when you moved to the States, you began your solo career with several um, studio albums, live recordings, and your most recent album, which came out last year, Another Life, that one, you had some great musicians who were guest guests on that album. Can you talk a little bit about those people and what that I mean, project that, was like for you? That, that was a slight departure for me because I didn't use my band. I used, uh, I got... I had a few meetings with a producer called Matt Pearson and we decided to take a different route and make a more intimate solo kind of approach to the record and he suggested we uh, use uh, Larry Campbell on the guitars and Tony Cher on the bass and Kenny Wallison on the drums. Now I knew these musicians from, from being here and uh, it worked out real good, you know, that Obviously, Larry's a wonderful musician. Like he was just at the outpost with his wife, Teresa Williams. That was okay. a fantastic show. Everybody knows Great that. instrumentalist. Oh, yeah, he's, 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 a, he's a treasure. Uh, Tony Cher is the same. He's an incredible bass player. He's also an incredible guitar player. Uh, but on my record, he played the bass. And, you know, for the most part, I mean, it's an acoustic album. It feels to me like a kind of solo 70s introspective record. Mm -hmm. It's certainly not a rocking record, it's a quiet Beautiful record. Album. Thank Beautiful you. Album. Mm -hmm. It's a quiet record and, and we approached every song with a minimalist kind of what's the least we can get away with type mm -hmm. approach. Uh, Ollie Rockberger plays on it, of mm -hmm. course. Great keyboard and he, uh, He's my keyboard player, player right? I play with. Mm -hmm. And. Um, you know, it came out real pretty. I'm very, very beautiful happy album. with it. Really beautiful album. That was a fan-funded album. And I know, I just correct me if this, uh, tell me if this is correct or not, you had to choose an um, organization or a charity to get some of those funds from, the, from, your, from that project, and you chose the Innocence uh, Project. And I know that's an organization that you feel connected to and, and is important to. And why did you choose that? And um, I don't really don't know why... why I'm not really a charity type person, you know, I'm not really, I don't really go that route politically, but um, with the pledge campaign, a percentage of your money has to go to a charity, and the, the Innocence Project seems to me a charity that is, it basically it's about getting people out of prison who shouldn't be in prison, and often it's DNA which will prove the innocence of the person incarcerated, and it's often the case that they don't have the money just to pay for the DNA test, so people are languishing in prison for 20, 30 years. Because uh, they just can't afford the, 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 the lawyers and the stuff to to, um, to get it done. And it just seems to me a very worthwhile... You can see where your money goes. Right. It gets people out of prison. And I thought it was a very worthwhile Fantastic. and immediate mm -hmm. uh, charity well, I was to happy support. to support your project and support that organization. Because yeah. I know they do really great work. So I have one final question for you, and then we'll stop, and we'll have the music segment of the show. And, and my question is this. This show is called No Cover, and I always like to ask the guest, if you could think of an artist band that you would like to cover one of your songs, oh. who would that be? Who would I like to cover one of my songs? Justin Bieber, because then I'd make some money. <laughs> <laughs> that was not the person I was expecting you to who say, you but that's of? a good answer, James. Uh, I mean, I've got so many heroes that I love, you know, that I would... Most of them are dead, unfortunately. Yeah, I just before we stop, I do want you to mention who's your biggest hero because I, I know that and I really want you to, to share that with the uh, audience. Louis Armstrong. Louis is Armstrong, my hero. and, and yeah. why do you love Louis Armstrong so much? I think because the way he makes me feel when he plays. Uh, as simple as that. You know, I listen to mm -hmm. him and I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> how did that happen? Right. You know? right. So he makes me feel something inside. Mm -hmm. But if somebody was to do one of my songs, I'd be honoured. If uh, I love Van Morrison, you know, mm -hmm. maybe he'd be. Somebody I would. Oh, I got so many heroes, you know. Okay. Neil Young. Okay, well, those would be yeah. great choices. Your songs are really beautiful, and we're really glad that you took the time to come with us today. Thank and you. we'll be right back with the music segment of No Cover, so don't go away.
Special Olympics has changed my life so dramatically. I truly realize that what I'm doing is for a great cause. It helped me a lot to be fearless, you know, in the real world. My friends I've made through Special Olympics are the best people I've ever met in my life. I've made a difference. Now it's your turn to make a difference. We are champions together. Making a difference every day. This is a song called Better On My Own. I washed up some plates, I cleaned out the fridge, dusted some shelves, come on look what I did. I emptied the bin and I tied it a drawer. Hung up my coat and I went to the storm Better on my own, better on my own I tell myself as I ain't walking home Better on my own, better on my own I don't know how to stop or how to carry on I sat on my bed I was thinking it through When the answer arrived It just didn't ring true Well, I'm not myself But I never was I can't find the key To open my doors Better on my own Better on my own I tell myself as I ain't walking home Better on my own, better on my own I don't know how to stop or carry on The girl in the wheelchair, she dressed up to kill If that don't impress you, nothing will Her hair done all pretty, and she's so full of pride I stare at the pavement and I choke up inside Well I did what I did And I hid what I hid We ain't got no papers And we ain't got no kids I'm as sad as a brick That fell out the wall The lonely old timer Seen and done it all Better on my own Better on my own I tell myself as I ain't walking home Better on my own, better on my own I don't know how to stop or carry on I don't know how to stop or how to carry on I don't know how to stop or carry on Better on my own Yeah Okay, this is a song called Another Life which is the title track of my new album Future's uncertain, my back starts hurting as soon as I get out of bed. I listen to the news station, trouble in the whole nation, airplane passes by, it's gotta be a mile high, reminds me that I'm not a bird, but there's a side of me. One part prisoner and one part free There's only so much any man can be 
We all want another life Another 50 years To see the outback and the Himalayas Feel that arctic wind around your ears We all want another life Picking up my paycheck. Well, how am I gonna make it? How am I ever getting out of this hole? Stuck in a time frame, caught up in the mundane. I wanna learn dancing, motorbike riding. Maybe I have a kid or two or three. There's a side of me, one part prisoner in. One part free There's only so much Anyone can be We all want another life Another 50 years To see the outback And the Himalayas Feel that arctic wind Around your ears We all want another life Whitewater rafting, be a total failure. Go back back in Australia, learn to play the sitar, and get better on the old guitar, and try some illegal substances. But there's a side of me, one part prisoner and one part free. There's only so much. Any one of us can be We all want another life Cause there's so much to know So many places that you want to go We've hardly got the time to stop and say hello We all want another life To sail the Baltic Sea Ride an elephant to Timbuk three. Walk this land from sea to shining sea. We all want another life. Thank you for listening, everybody. Um, I'll see you at the Outpost in the Burbs on the 28th. Uh, I have a website, jamesmaddock.net, and I have a Facebook page, James Maddock Music. I'm easy to find, and uh, I'll see you at the gigs. And I'll finish with a song called Keep Your Dream, people. <laughs> Can't get out of bed And you're stuck inside your head And you're tired of this old scene You've got to keep your dream, girl You've got to keep your dream Ambition starts to fade And you're feeling kind of played And you're running out of steam You've got to keep your dream, girl You've got to keep your dream It's more than just a vision Keeps you on your path 
gives us all a reason to get up every morning and laugh when your boss is on your case and he's always in your face and all you want to do is scream you've got to keep your dream girl You've got to keep your dream It's more than just a vision Keeps you on your path Gives us all a reason To get up in the morning and laugh When you can't get out of bed And you're stuck inside your head And you're tired of this old routine You've got to keep your dream, girl You've got to keep your dream You've got to keep your dream You've got to keep your dream No one can understand the life of a woman in the developing world better than another woman in any part of the world. The struggle to be equal and to be allowed to realize your potential. At CARE, we found that when women are empowered, it's one of the fastest ways to help the world move forward. If you'll just reach out and lend a hand, you won't believe what you can start. Visit care.org. This has been another edition of No Cover. I'm your host, Gail Preslin. Our guest today has been James Maddock. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. There's something in your head. I don't know if I got the words to that one. That's not good enough. <laughs> oh.